Good morning, guys. So I haven't done a video for a while, and I guess there's really not been much to say, if I'm honest. In terms of what I put out back in March, I'm still sticking to my guns. Um, I'm looking for the longer term trade, as I said before. This move up on the weekly time frame, there was only one real point for me personally that I would have potentially taken a trade, but based on what I'm trying to do as my own entry, kind of a one-time entry, more of an investment rather than a trade, the risk management situation wasn't ideal given the situation, okay? So I just want to cover, you know, where I am and kind of why and just reiterate going all the way back to March, okay? So what I'll do is I'll start off with the same old, same old. We're going to go into the first couple of calls. So if you come around to the 18th of March, you'll see on the rocket call, I've covered this in several streams and videos, you'll actually see that the A come down exactly as kind of tagged and planned. The B actually come up about 2,000, 2,500 more than anticipated, which meant the C also come down, but actually dragged up 2,000 more than expected in terms of that initial drop. Now, the, the levels are very critical um, later on, and they will become useful later on. But in terms of the move down, the extension really was this four, okay? So if you look at where we were and where we are, what I'll do is I'll just get rid of the charts a second. So what I'll do is I'll stick this off and I will just show you in terms of the rocket kind of outcome. So as I mentioned, you can see the A come down, bounce straight off A back up to B, overshot B by about 2,000, drop down to C. Now, if you look over... Um, at the swing low, the C and the D actually went, you know, 2,000 higher. So as expected, really, you'd actually see the C being the first swing low, the D coming back up to touch the 8-hour OB, the red box that I have there. And then the longs and shorts of it was, we kind of accelerated faster than I would have liked. If I'm honest, I would have liked to have seen this in August, September, where we actually added in May and June. So the move was very aggressive as a whole but the longs and shorts of it was it's done no different to what was actually expected right now the reason that this was actually expected is if i go back and stick then the charts back on here now the reason that we were expecting this was from my own point of view this looked very much like a weekly three to four move inside a monthly uh two to three move okay so in essence, what I was saying is that I didn't believe the three was in, okay, in terms of the monthly picture. Now, there's still an argument for it, and I'm not going to rule that out. This is part of being very subjective, especially when it comes to Elliott Wave. But I felt that at the time, we would actually look in more at the weekly, okay? So if we assume the weekly bias, what we then have to look at is using the Weiss technique that I like to use is that clear as day, we had the one here, the two sitting in here, and the three coming up here, okay? So the three for me was part of this move. And although it hasn't quite turned here, you know, I'm going to take this two candles, two candles. So for me, you know, let's just utilize this at the moment, right? And therefore, everything to the right of this felt very much like a fall, right? Now, the big question is, is has this actually finished as a fall? right? Now, if we say, yes, it has, we would assume that our move one would be this, right? And I just didn't like it, right? I still don't like it. This isn't what I'm feeling. And I just want to kind of highlight that even if it is, and this is something that people say, oh, well, we've missed this and we've missed that, you know, this is the world changing opportunity. It's not, right? And I can categorically tell you, it's not. So, the reality is, if we assume that we are a weekly move, right, all you'd now have to do is utilize the Fibonacci extension levels. And we're going to go low, zero to one. We're going to come back down for the two, right? And the longs and shorts of that is even if we've had a three, a four, all we're getting, guys, is a five, right? So we might be lucky. If we get now a pullback from this drop, this, this ugly wick, and we get a wick fill, We'd be lucky to take that wick fill, come up to around 70,000. And I've said 65 to 72 for a while. And, you know, ultimately at that stage, we would actually be at a weekly five. Okay. 
and that in essence would only be the monthly three okay so we got a weekly five monthly three if we are lucky enough to get up to that level now clearly the volume here is nothing in comparison to the volume there right so that doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence as a whole okay so that's the first thing that's the first area that again option one for me is that we do get a slightly newer high in terms of the high we get a wick fit on this particular candle you know new buyers jump into the market liquidity kind of pot fills itself up and the rug gets pulled okay so that's an option still worth considering these fibonacci extensions they're not going to lie right so that's the first thing now the reason for me i've put this out again and i'm going to keep you know defending this in terms of a situation is that i wrote this out again back in march okay and obviously in trading view is something that you can't edit i've actually got this in terms of the roadmap if you come inside the idea what you'll actually see is that i was calling the high at around 60k 62k and obviously we went up around 64 okay so we dropped down exactly to the 30k level as expected and you'll see on the 26th of march i was looking for roughly the 60k move given us that drop down okay so actually went up a little bit further come up like i said 64 or whatever it was the old all-time high and we actually come on down okay so this for me was the move down like i said this was the 26th of march you can see that on the screen 26th of march now this particular move was coupled in with a classic Wyckoff distribution pattern and everything played out pretty much textbook right and i'll come back into this in a second so back over to the chart i'm going to then show the current um what do we have well I'll actually keep this on the chart so what i'll do is i'll just get rid of some of these okay so just remember monthly three weekly five potentially 72 okay so that's where i think we are heading as in option one right, so sorry it's a bit slow getting rid of some of these so right this one for me therefore means that the look that i'm looking at is a three a four and a very shallow five right now just as the post here indicates i was actually expecting something a little bit higher for the three and the forecast that i've put there is actually around 83 to around 96 and that was the extension based on this move now you know calling a three down and a four up um sorry the other way around three down to a four and a four up to five um you know it's a very difficult thing to do especially you know six nine months um you know in, in, into the past and, and obviously then call it in the future so this is never going to be you know 100 percent accurate this is more the bias is what you're actually looking for okay so on this particular move if we play out where we've actually gone and i'm just going to come into what i've got there with the forecast move you'll actually see that we hit the high we went up like i said around 2000 more than anticipated we had an a and a b and a c down okay so that could easily have been the zigzag pattern now option two takes me into a another slightly bearish scenario and there's a couple of options for this and i'll come into this in a second so in my march call i was anticipating this move up like i said quite a bit higher and there's nothing stopping us getting there especially with the retail hype we could easily dash up to 80 is this the move that's going to take us to 100,000 you know and beyond i i i really do doubt that right now again there's nothing stopping us there the cot data um is still actually showing that these guys are selling into the rally in terms of the institutional traders which means they're still profit taking okay so when i say that they still profit taking the reason that my bias on this is not overly bullish right now you know i've been bullish since 2011 i kind of felt on the four weekly move if we assume that that's what it was that like i said there was only one point and i'll come into that as well in a second there was only one point during the whole move that actually made it feel a little bit bullish right it was just something that was hyped the volume clearly 
isn't sitting there. You can see that as clear as day. Okay. So if we now come into the potential play for you, the reason that I feel that the 83 plus is kind of off the table is that we have another option that earlier on in March I hadn't really considered. But I think looking at the current situation and the current move, the fact that we've got a low volume move on up would suggest that the institutional traders are still selling into the rally. And if retail want to pay you know, more premium on the product, then of course, you know, these institutional guys, they are professional money makers. That's what they do for a job. When you guys are, you know, doctors, accountants, lawyers, postmen, police officers, these guys are money makers and nothing else, right? This is their job. So what you have to realize is that nobody's getting wrecked in terms of the COT they did. These guys are actually the guys selling to the retail willing to pay a premium on the product, right? And it's as simple as that, right? Now, when we start looking at the potential forecasts, we then have to look at the corrective options, right? So I've just highlighted and come out to the bigger time frame and put this on the monthly. So in terms of the corrective options, right, we've actually got a couple of plays. We've got a zigzag, which would give us a five, three, let me get rid of this. Will give us a five, three, five play. Okay, so that's the first thing. We've got a five, three, five. Okay, and the five, three, five would mean we'd need five moves inside this drop. We'd need a three up move followed by a five down. Okay, so if we assume that this actually was the weekly three, we could have had just a zigzag in and this taking us up bullish. Now, if this takes us up bullish, the extension is taking us pretty much to 65 to 72. We might get into my 83 range with a little bit of hype, but I kind of doubt that, okay? Now, <clears throat> the other option that's on the table is that if this was indeed the monthly three, okay? Now, there's again logic for this because just like the Weiss wave on the weekly, we could assume this given us the three here, okay? So if we assume, you know, a one there, a two here, and a three sitting there, we could easily identify the current or the old all-time high now as the monthly three, okay? Now, if this is option two, and this is the scenario we would consider, and like I said, I'm not ruling either of these two out. These are the still mainly the two options on the table for me. What you now have is a slightly different configuration back to the moves that we have. Let me get rid of some. Let's get rid of this as well. So just to clean up the chart. So what we then have is if we assume this now has given us the moves that look something like this, right? We would now have a monthly zero down here somewhere. We're going to go one. We're going to go two at the low, right? And we're going to get the three, which means we'd have a one, two. There's going to be a three in here somewhere. And this is where the big question mark is. There was not really any pullback, right? So the question mark for me is, let's assume worst case scenario, we're already at this monthly three, okay? What you'd expect from this particular move is now going beyond the three, but not actually completing a three wave, an ABC inside this. We would actually regard this as an expanded flat, okay? Now, in terms of an expanded flat, you'd actually expect the B move, I have just deleted that one, you'd actually expect the B move to go 123%, right, of the A move. So we'd have to assume this B in the A, okay? And we can now assume this given us the B. Now there's nothing stopping that an expanded fat coming 123% of the A, right? And then we'd expect the five wave move down. Now that could just create a double bottom and then we go, right? Now, if that's the case, you could easily expect that being a monthly four, this actually being the monthly three, and therefore a monthly five, we can use the Fibonacci extension, giving us a more realistic target towards that 100K market. And it might be a little bit deeper, right? It might be a little bit further in terms of the level, but we can't rule both options out. 
we've got the monthly three in and this is an expanded flat taking us to the 123 and then back down or we've actually got a weekly three giving us a weekly four and this potentially targets into the upside a weekly five right now there's a couple of things for me on that particular move when we're coming now to the smaller time frames if we assume <laughs> that the three there was actually the week right so i'm just going to go back to the um the smaller account to be in the three to four weekly so i'm just going to go three weekly and we're going to assume four weekly okay and just make these the, the obvious now what we have is on this particular move right this is something that again i've kind of shown where potentially the extensions were Back on the 29th of August, I was showing the channel for this and I've shared this within the Discord group. So you can clearly see a zero one up for a three, you know, from the three back down to four. We've tagged the top of the channel. You can see the date on this, the 29th of August, and we've done no different than what we were actually expecting. Okay. The second thing was I've actually got some interesting levels here that again was done earlier on. This is to do with some clustering techniques. And ultimately, we can see where the heavy volume um, is kind of sitting and where we're going to get heavy resistance and support. And we actually forecasted this to come up, tag this, and it's done exactly that. Okay, so if we were to assume that these are the kind of levels that we're looking at, there is some fear that we've actually now tagged the weekly five, giving me what I would assume the monthly three. Okay. And the reason for that is we can go into this move and we can go here, here, and there. And actually, if we look at the overall levels, there was nothing there at the 1618 in terms of the pullback, which means this was the first three for me. So I'd have to go a one sitting here, a two sitting there. I'd have to go three, okay? I'd have to bring this thing as a four, and I'd be looking now for a five with a question mark, okay? So that's another option that we have there. And we can look at obviously the extension then on the fifth wave all the way through. If we put some logic to this particular move, we can then see that from the two to the three, we actually had a 50% bounce. So again, that's you know pretty much as you'd expect. It's kind of conforming to the rules. A couple of things I didn't like along the bottom was we had you know a three wave in there i read this as a five so i didn't like this i didn't like this now we had this move up we had this pullback now around again kind of end of august i'd actually put this out as an option um in the group okay and this is actually the entry that i personally didn't like okay now you know, if people want to follow this and people want to take this, you know, be my guest. But for me personally, this isn't what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the higher probability. And in Bitcoin in particular, I'm looking for the long buy to hold rather than buy to sweat it in terms of the move up. Okay. Now, people are going to say, oh, well, you know, 100% move is, you know, is ideal. Yes. But what I'm looking for is to, to hodl this, right? So I'm not looking for a move that I can take 100% off the table and ride it all the way back down to buy it all over again, right? I've been lucky enough with what I've done. I've been lucky enough, you know, investing in Bitcoin since 2011. I sold off towards the top with calling it. You've seen the white cloth distribution. You've seen the roadmap. I know exactly where I am in my own trading journey. And therefore, I'm kind of putting up more maybe cryptic messages, as Paul would call them. And the idea is that it's more about the education rather than the calling the bottoms and the tops. OK, so if you are following and you are especially in the Discord server already, you'll actually see a lot of this cryptic kind of messaging. But I'm actually giving you the options and the scenarios as one is invalidated. You can kind of lean on the other. But like I said, for me personally, I'm looking for that higher probability, lower risk with a much higher risk reward ratio. OK, so in this particular move, you'll see in the top right, this was on the um, the 24th of August. I was expecting the three extension high, a pullback four, and then ultimately up here. Right. And again, staying in tune with the options as I've actually put in this chart, um, this would confirm that, you know, this 
potentially the weekly three to four move. Okay. And then what I'd like to see is that, you know, the buyers that we would have had at 65 upwards, they'll probably see 40K again pretty soon. Okay. So just as I've covered there, I'm going to come back then over to the charts and put this in. So <clears throat> in essence, what we're actually looking at is that we've now got two very likely scenarios. Now, I'm going to stick this on in terms of the regular volume, which is just in trading view. And therefore, in this move up, right, this is where I was calling, you know, for a, a, a three within the fifth wave move. And that's the one I just showed on the 24th of August. You'll actually see this one possibly. I think this was either a 61. It might have been 100% given us a symmetry. But in this particular move down, we would have had something that looks like this. So you've gone A, B, and to the C, which would have given us practically to the pip, the 61%, right? And you can see that it consolidated and moved. So you might have seen a little white cough structure sitting in there on the smaller time frames. I'm out on the daily at the moment on this one, right? So that for me would have been the only entry that I would have even entertained in this rally up. Right, at all. It was nothing in there for me as a full out, full on professional trader looking at this saying, hey, I'm ready to buy the bottom. You know, would I have bought 30? Definitely not. Would I have bought 28? 100% not. Right. And therefore, this is not about catching the bottoms and the tops. This is actually looking for what suits your trading plan, your trading move. Now, as I said before about the volume, right, what you'd actually want is you'd want to see volume that looks a little bit like this, right? That's really entertaining. That's the kind of volume you want in an up move. Right now, we've only had that there, right? And that give us the first option, like I said, from the low, right? Now, that one there, before we got any kind of pullback to enter, we were already tagging this, right? So if you're a shorter term trader, you know, yes, you could have gone in here, by all means, go for it, right? But like I said, for me personally, that's not what I'm looking for. Now, comparing this size volume compared to this over here, all we got to do is just be realistic and say, look, let's go kind of average. Apart from the initial move up, we've had nothing that's actually tagged that average. And I'm not talking about, you know, crazy volume there. We're talking about the move here. You know, there's spikes within that move. And... Up until now, we've tagged nothing other than the average in the first move, okay? So if you were to say, okay, the bottom's called, I went with my rocket call, you know, I've painted this on the roadmap. Are we in? Yeah, probably it is. Now, the extension from there is not enough for, like I said, for me personally, to say that this is an attractive move. Now, if we were to say we have a couple of other things that we can do which makes this kind of clever is that we would say that from the one to the three, right? We've got there. And we're going to say from the two to the four, we're going to mark up something like this. Okay. So what we're actually seeing here is what they call a throwover, right? And there's a throwover move sitting in there. This basically means we've got the shortening of the thrust and we're actually likely to see now a move on down. Okay. So, Putting all this into consideration, the only option on the table for me was this little circle here at the four. And I'm looking at this saying, well, you know, where would you have got in, right? There's logic for this now. Yeah, a little bit of a move up here in terms of the volume. But again, the hype that was there was the COT data selling into the rally, still profit taking, which means for me, the option two of this being an expanded flat is now potentially more likely that we could assume a weekly three, which would make sense to a four. But actually, we're now seeing the high here giving us the monthly three, which means we are very, very likely to take this all the way back down to 40. Right now, you've seen the Ethereum move. We've gone literally to you know the dollar to the cent. I can't remember exactly what it was. I don't follow Ethereum that much. But if you've broken an all-time high, you'd actually expect the price to rally straight on through it, okay? Now, 
if I look at this for a major move, and we're talking about moves, you know, overall in you know high percentage, high probability, low risk type moves, how gutted would you be if you've now gone and bought the top? And I can categorically tell you, there would have been a lot of people, there are a lot of orders sitting there, and that is just fresh liquidity in terms of institutional money. Okay, so. Now what we have is Fibonacci extensions, you know, left, right, and center. We have logic for the move up. I'm actually going to bring my call back down from 83, you know, 96 that I was anticipating in March. The actual bottoming of this position has really kind of changed my opinion in terms of a higher call here, right? And the only way I think we get that is we come back up and fill the wick on the weekly we kind of rally up in terms of hype. And at that point, we then get the major move back down. Okay, which in some regard for retail traders is kind of going to be worse, right? Now, what you have to think as a professional trader, the one thing that I keep in my mind is that in the crypto cult as a whole, right? And, and this is, you know, you have to be realistic. This is what it's becoming. You have these terms such as diamond hands, and you're trading against professional money makers, right? I'm looking at the Twitter feed. I'm looking at the sentiment as a whole. And I'm saying to myself, what's the worst scenario in terms of making money here? What's the biggest impact that I could have, you know, large traders in the same regard, you know, do? What would you look at? in terms of causing the most amount of pain for retail. Now, for me, the obvious play is that, you know, these diamond hand kind of holders, they're not willing for a, you know, 100% gain, which means you take a move from here and you got lucky to buy into this position, you know, granted, fine, boom, you make 100%, right? How many people are saying, I'm never selling? The price comes all the way back down, right? We get a new double bottom. For me, in that move, you're going to get guys who think they won't sell right now. And granted, they will still make some profits. So there's no harm in that particular move. But you are talking about a cult, right? You are talking about people that have sold their houses. They've sold furniture. You know, it, it, it's kind of that bad, right? They, they've put almost their last pennies into this particular move. If you're not willing to take 100% profit off the table when it's kind of slapping you in the face, you are going to get burnt, right? And that's the only thing that I'm looking to kind of highlight for you guys out there, you know, to kind of avoid. If you've got a move like this and you can see an obvious pullback, take it and run, right? Take the pullback, buy the dip and go again, right? And that's the beauty of it. I was lucky enough to sell out at the top you know, didn't trade anything from the bottom, didn't really like this move on the way up, kind of felt that this was going to be the extension levels the way we were back to what I was saying in March. And therefore, if we are now monthly three, we're coming monthly four, right? So overall, this situation suits me down to the ground, right? So in essence, now what we have is a move that looks like this. We've got a three wave move up. So in essence, we've got a five down, three up right which takes us obviously into the classic moves in terms of elliot we've got the extensions the fibonacci levels so on so on so on so on all sitting there right so when i put all this together i'm looking now for the next level down right and this is where you know i'll probably finish off on this particular move is that if we assume that the high is actually here. We've got two options, right? We're going to fill the weekly wick, as I mentioned earlier, and we might take a little bit of a hype rally fake out before the move down, right? So that's option one in terms of now the corrective move. The second option you have is we have to now come probably a little bit lower in the time frame. So I'm going to go for four hour. Now, what you're looking for on the four hour is potentially a drop down that looks something like this. So I'm just gonna be rough on this. I'm not gonna use the magnet on this, right? Which means <laughs> we're very likely to see somewhere around, let's just go to the high there, 57, and more likely 
55.7. Okay, so if we were to assume now that in this particular move down, we'd likely see some kind of an A move. Okay, so we're going to go A. Let's go in the center of both. We're likely to come back up for a B, which could easily be, you know, 123% as an option, right? That's one option expanded flat. More likely, we're likely to see an A and a B and a C in the zigzag form, okay? So we're going to get potentially a five looking at this. It's going to be the one, the two, probably the three, the four, and down for a five, okay? So let's just assume the center for now. What we're looking at is on this move, we we'll probably likely come back to 63. And at this point, you're going to have buyers going, wow, you know, this is off to the moon all over again. And at this point, they get, you know, kind of heartbroken with the view of now we're on the way back down. OK, now this is where it gets even more interesting for me. We're just going to assume that the levels that I've just put in here, right, are actually going to give us an A, a B and a C move. Right? Now, yes, we could come up here. I'm just going to rule that out for now because that's an option we'll see as the move up starts to play itself up okay so what i'm thinking we're going to have now is we've got the starting point let's assume a five wave move down which will actually take us into zigzag territory so again that's more likely than an expanding flat right so now i would say a b i'd like to target down or around 57 and a half down to around 56 right that's an obvious kind of play could run a bit deeper could be a bit shallower right but that's really my expectation on this particular move we'd see a 61 percent pullback right given us obviously that's the a sorry rather than the b we'd actually see the b sitting at the 61 okay now this is just like i said on the assumption that we're going to do what i think we're going to do in this move what you then have is from here we would see a pullback there pullback down and the overall zigzag would actually give us a target around a similar level right so i'm going to take the first one being 50k so that's going to be a psychological level you know people say you know breaking a 50 doing this doing that you could have 52 as well given that you've got symmetry in the market and i think then the kind of deeper level is likely to be the 1618 right now just as the inverse of the hype to the upside, you have to be realistic and say, if we break the 50K level, right, this is the 50K level here. If we break that 50K level and people see that as a massive, massive psychological play, there's nothing stopping the fear kicking in, right? And that fear kicking in, taking us down and beyond like i said to almost some kind of double bottom right so if you look at the extension there what i would also consider for this particular move is the level of liquidity that we have clearly sitting in here i'm just going to drag that across right which gives me a 40k you know definite possibility right i would probably look at the extension on something like this from an a to a b and I would probably look at the 2618, right? Which again, takes me down to this kind of level here, right? So 35 could easily be on the table with a full scale extension, right? Now, I'm not saying that's where we go. Ideally, it's 46. And that for me would give me more comfort going 46 to, you know, 150 and beyond than actually trying to capture, you know, from 40 to 60 because I would have only used this, you know, a stop at maybe 19K. And therefore the trade for me would have been, you know, a full risk, full out 19K from 45, um, you know, looking for 45 to 60, because I didn't know whether or not we'd actually get higher than the, the old all time high. So for me, there's logic there. We've got 200% could easily flow, you know, from 46 down to 42. That's the center of the liquidity box here. We've actually got 42 below 35. I think 35 for me is still the value. Probably 36 is actually still the value area in terms of institutional money. And I just feel that if we get below 50, that drop is actually going to be fueled by more of the fear 
and the kind of get out now, get back in later type of mentality. So I think we could see an acceleration through the 50 market if we were to get near enough, you know, there. So like I said, for me, the options are still pretty much going back to what I'd said in March. You can see this obviously in my profile. I genuinely feel, you know, this is where we are. This is what we've done. You know, yes, in terms of the current weekly move, one option for me, like I said, in terms of entry, but, you know, looking back and reflecting on it, you know, I've posted this in the group. It wasn't for me, still isn't for me. You know, I don't feel like I've missed anything out in terms of the move up right now. It's kind of playing as I would expect. And the reality is the monthly four is going to give me the optimal entry for the type of trade that I'm looking for. So I know this one's a bit of a longer winded video, but I hope you've enjoyed this one. And uh, obviously we'll be doing a couple of other videos in the next couple of days. I know Paul will be doing his streams back on TradingView as well. So we'll enjoy the weekend and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.